Heidi here from Rain Country, God is good, all the time. And I'm here for my weekly this and that video. And if you're new, what these videos are about are a more up-to-date video talking about some whatever's going on. It can be garden updates, it can be updates on different projects I may have going on, or new things that I'm trying, stocking up on, whatever. And it's what I like to call a potpourri style video because I talk about many different things rather than like a lot of my other videos focusing on one specific topic. So anyway, let's get to the topics of today. Now, the first thing I want to start off with because this just happened and it wasn't initially on my list to talk about, but we have just as of maybe about 15 minutes ago, lost all communications, at least as far as cell phone and internet. We have none of that. And we don't use a landline to make phone calls. So our landline is solely for internet. But if we have to, we can make 911 calls by plugging in a regular phone into that, but that's all it's good for when it comes to phone calls. Now, with the way things are right now, with everything being down, I'm not even sure if that would go through. So this reminds me yet again of one of the purchases we've been thinking about doing for years, but have yet to do it, and that is to get a base station to go with our ham radio. We just currently have some handhelds that don't have the greatest distance, but we, that was just our starting point and we've been meaning to build on that. And it's times like these that I'm like, ah, we, we still haven't done that yet. We just keep forgetting. We've been meaning to do more research to find out what's the best base station, blah, 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 blah. Then we think about it at times like this, but then I can't get online to look it up because I don't have internet. So just a reminder of just a, of another preparation you need to be considering. We do also have a CB radio on one of our vehicles. So we have we do have other means to contact people if we need to. This is not an uncommon common occurrence here it's most likely it'll be up by the end of the day so you just never know things around here like that happen all the time power outages cell phone outages internet outages and what I've been seeing more frequently lately though is the cell phone and the internet being in tandem with each other and both going out at the same time so anyway something to think about is things like these that make us totally sane to always be prepared so let's get on to the other topics I want to talk about. And I'm going to start with the actual garden update. So starting with the back deck, I have a shot here showing my grapevines, how well they're coming along. There are little tiny grapes growing on there now. From the deck, stepping through that, that nice little saloon style gate that Patrick made for me to keep the chickens off the deck, you go out into the main garden. Well, I still call that my main garden, but it's not really my main garden anymore because everything's a garden around here. But that was where my main garden originally got started and I was growing everything there until I started moving more stuff out to the south side of the house, which is the front. So the front's where I grow a good amount of my potatoes and my zucchini, my amaranth and a few other things. But that bigger section right in the middle of the backyard is where I'm now growing most of my medicinal herbs. I do a lot along the west side. That was going to be my main medicinal herb garden, but I've started growing bigger taller things in this back section and that also includes the sunflowers which should some of them the older plants should start blooming pretty soon because i started them at various times so i have some that are farther along than others but you see my valerian out there my chicory my marshmallow but i do still grow vegetables back there such as the beans mostly in that section so i got a lot of beans that's my main bean section right there for the most part it's that area now has become more dedicated to perennials especially but even some annual herbs a lot of the ones that come up on their own like the borage and the red mustard some kale here and there and just whatever wants to come up in there and, and plantain plantain yeah, it takes up a big chunk of that garden. <laughs> I also have a clip here of my greenhouse. You can see my tomatoes are coming along. I have been picking some of the vernissage. They're always the first ones to get ripe. And I am starting to see some little tiny peppers growing on my Chinese five color peppers. And it looks like the little mini red bell peppers are going, are just at that point where they're gonna start getting some flowers. So here's an interesting thing. So last week, I believe it was, it was either last week's video or the one before, I was talking about that three-day heat wave we had. Well, it was only three days. That's it. 
it, it was three days of hot and I thought that once we got through it we were going to settle back into our normal warmer but not hot summer temperatures but instead we've gone backwards and now we're back to early spring cooler temps and so it's had a very weird effect on a good part of my garden so my snow peas though the heat surprisingly enough didn't burn up my snow peas they're still growing part of the reason that they didn't fully get burned up is because they're closest to the chicken coop and that playhouse that keep it pretty well shaded through most of the day so that helped a lot but it did stunt them quite a bit so parts of my plants got fried and now they're just starting to get flowers again thankfully they like the cool but some of the other things that like the heat that we're starting to take off have become stunted again so it's just been very strange but anyway you can also see here this is my newer garden section where i've got my squash planted this is the one that patrick just built for me this year and just in time for me to get my squash in the ground and so it's you know the heat though that heat wave got it going but it's still growing okay but the cold has kind of slowed down the growing process but at least today we're getting rain i was just complaining a little bit ago it's like we've been having all this cold cloudy weather but no rain well thankfully we're getting some rain today we really really need it because it's been very dry here even for our area so that's it for the garden for this week uh, not that there's not other things going on but uh, that was the main thing I wanted to cover was what was going on in the back area. Now let's talk about the sour cream powder. So I finally broke down and tried, decided to try the sour cream powder. I didn't go directly to the Hoosier Hills because even though I love that brand and I love everything else I've tried by them, I saw bad reviews on the sour cream powder. There were some people that really liked it and some that didn't, but I thought, how about I go directly to my other favorite brand, which is Judy's, and Judy's does pack theirs in the Mylar bags so it stay you can actually just put them away in your long-term storage in these bags and they should be good i've had no issues with them with the whole milk powder that i've used by judy and this i i was impressed too with the ingredients nothing in here but sour cream powder no added ingredients a lot of hoosier hill products are the same way but you have to watch their cheese powders other than the cream cheese powder the other ones you have to be careful of because they have some added ingredients that are not the best but this this is pretty good i'm i'm happy with it it's not as tart as i would like it to be but the main reason i got it was because i wanted to try making a ranch dressing using the sour cream powder instead of using yogurt or milk kefir and i never have sour cream on hand because i'm the only one here that will eat it and i don't think about it that often no i like it i don't eat it with everything i might eat it with my with whenever i make some kind of mexican food if i have it on hand or maybe a potato if i have it on hand but other than that and then possibly using it in ranch dressing i just don't have a lot of use for it but having a powder on hand makes more sense because it's something i can work through a little at a time and just either keep it in the packages or jar it up like i'm thinking about putting this one in a jar i'll do that a lot of times if i open something i'll then put it in a jar for working through just to make it a little bit easier but anyway so i did make some ranch dressing with it turned out pretty good and that way i was able to use my homemade mayonnaise and the sour cream powder but because it seemed to not have as much zing as I think should be in ranch dressing, what I did was I went ahead and added some of my homemade vinegar to that. Any homemade vinegar you got, whichever one sounds best to you, that's of course edible, then uh, that will work if you need just a little more tartness and using it in something like a... Um, salad dressing now i'll probably be doing a just like i mentioned about the cream cheese powder once i do more experimenting with it and try making a cheesecake out of it and some other things uh, i'll be doing a separate video just on that i'll be doing the same thing on the sour cream powder but i want time to experiment with it some more because all I've done so far is just do the ranch dressing. So I want to try using it for baked potatoes and Mexican foods and whatever else it is that I think sour cream will sound good with. And the nice thing about this is whenever on any kind of powder, whether it be a butter powder or a sour cream powder or cream cheese powder, you can just add the amount of water you need to get the consistency you want. So let's say with the sour cream powder, instead of having it be as thick 
as you would normally buy sour cream. You can choose to have it be a little runnier so you can drizzle it over your baked potatoes if you would prefer. And just some things to think about. So I'm really happy with this so far in the little bit I've used it. And I will go ahead and put a link to that one down below. Oh, one more thing about my garden I forgot to mention is I have been getting a couple of zucchinis. Um, I tend to like to pick them when they're about this size rather than waiting until they're massive. Though there's always those ones that you miss and they overnight, they go from this size to this size. So that happens from time to time. But I do think they have the best flavor when they're picked about this size. Otherwise, they kind of get punky on the inside and they start to lose their flavor. So preferable time to pick them was when they're about like that. So they're a little more on time this year than they were last year. Last year, they were well over a month behind. This year, they're a little more on schedule, but this cold that came back has slowed them back down again. So the zucchini isn't growing. The plants are looking great, but the zucchini themselves, the fruit, is not growing as fast as it should be growing or as it will be once the weather, if it ever does, warm back up again. And then right here, I have some fixins ready to go because I'm going to be making some more of my multi-purpose cleaning powder. And not only because I've been using it more and more, and the more I use it, the more I love this stuff, but I need to have another jar on hand because I only had three jars going, and I need to have one next to my laundry, and then one here in the kitchen, and then one in each bathroom. So I need four, and I only had three. So I'm going to be topping off my jars that are, I have two jars already that look like this, and then getting another jar going to keep in whatever place is missing a jar. But anyway, if you're interested in my multi-purpose cleaning powder, I did do a video specifically on this that I will link to down below. And I also did an update in another this and that video that I suggest you watch, even if you go in there just to watch the update on the powder and other ways that I used it and how I was able to get some stains out of clothing. Uh, I'll link to that one down below as well. So this is my it's my own recipe but it is based on other recipes and research that i did looking around and then the last thing i wanted to talk about i set these avocados out here so i'd remember and that is just giving you a quick update on how the misfits market is working for me i know some people have had some bad experiences but for me i've still been incredibly happy with them now not everything i get is perfect well because not everything is perfect that's why they can't sell it in the store but I've had very few things that I was unhappy with, very few, and I've been very pleased with the avocados. Usually every order I get, I get more avocados coming in. Most of them are pretty light green like this and they just need a couple of days to ripen, but that's not a big deal. In fact, I'd prefer they be shipped to me like this than shipped to me overripe, because then by the time they'd get here, I'd have to throw them out. But we've been getting some red grapes from there. The red, the organic red grapes that they have, at least where we're getting ours from, because not every place gets their produce from the same place around the country. So that's, I think that's part of the issue why some people have bad experiences. It depends on your climate and the place you're getting it from. We've had really good success. The red grapes have been awesome. So I actually got four bags. And you're probably thinking, well, four bags, how can you eat four bags at once? Well, what we do, and this is another little tip I wanted to give you people if you haven't ever tried it yet, especially in summer, this is wonderful. You get a nice, delicious grape, whether it be green, red, black, purple, whatever your favorite one is, stick them in the freezer. They freeze up wonderfully and they make a tasty treat on a hot day. So they're like little mini all natural popsicles and I guarantee that most people are really going to like it. And it's one of our favorite snacks in the summertime and these organic red grapes we've been getting from Misfits have been perfect for that. So anyway, that's my update there. But remember, if you're on Misfits Market and you're at that time of the year where it seems like some of your stuff isn't getting in fast enough or it's having to travel through some really hot areas and it's not staying preserved well enough, you can always pause your deliveries until the weather cools down. If you can't work through your stuff fast enough, pause it for a month or so and then just take it back up again. I have yet done that because I'm stocking up on stuff anyway. I've been stocking up on some meats and been very happy with them so far. Any, any of the meats that we've got have been very good. 
you know, all the nice grass-fed beef and the chicken breasts without the hormones and all that added to them. Very pleased so far. At least that's my personal experience. And if you're wondering where I'm at, we're on the west side of Washington State and most of our stuff, I believe, comes from Portland. So it's not that far and it's, you know, closer to the coast where we tend to stay a little bit cooler. So I think that's one of the reasons why even during the summer we're doing pretty good at getting some good stuff in. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed my this and that video for the week. Don't forget to check out the video links I'll be putting down below. And if I think of any more that I forgot to mention and that I think will be apropos, I'll put those down below as well. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.